That was a video from a former Morgantown High School graduate, Austin Cutright, on a simple way uh, to make uh, animations using Adobe Photoshop. We're going to be doing some flip books, and at the end of this video, uh, I'm going to show you some more examples from former Morgantown High School students. And today we're going to learn a little bit about animation using Photoshop. This is going to be simple animation. Um, a much like a flip book and I'm aware that most of us have all used flip books at one time or another this is a type of digital flip book so in order to prepare and get ready um, we must first uh, have the right desktop down in Photoshop so you're going to go here to window then to workspace and I want you to click on motion okay so you'll see um, this timeline will appear and some of your other desktop items will change. Once again, just like in anything else in Photoshop, your layers becomes very important. Um, and this timeline becomes very important. So the first thing I want to do here is create a new document. And uh, right here is 8 by 6, 72 DPI. Um, and the resolution does not have to be high with this. It uses a lot of memory. So we're going to keep the resolution around 72 DPI. And we're going to hit Create. So up comes your uh, screen. Now, what we need to do next is to set what our timeline is going to look like. Um, and you'll see this little arrow over here and it will say create video timeline or create a frame animation. Right now we're going to work in Photoshop using frame animation. And I want you to think of your each frame of this animation to be one page of a flip book. So I'll click that. And then you have to go again and click Create Frame Animation. So let's look at everything that just happened. You have a frame here, um, and your background appears up here on your layers. This is mainly the two palettes that you're going to be working with, your layers and your timeline. Layers basically work the same way they do in, um, when you're doing a Photoshop document. You'll have a background, um, and you can create layers on top of that by clicking uh, this little turned up page. So here's an empty layer, um, and on that empty layer, you can um, choose a brush, um, and you can choose the size of your brush, and um, you can choose the color, your hardness, etc. So on this layer one, I'm going to make a dot. So right there is a black dot. Okay. Now let's go down here to our timeline, and we have um, this frame. And right here, I do the same thing on the timeline as I create another frame. Okay? So now you can see both of these frames. This frame's highlighted. This frame is not. So I'm working on this highlighted frame. So while that's highlighted, I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to click the eyeball next to this layer for this particular frame. So watch what happens. It disappears. When I go back to this frame, it's on. So when I hit the play button, and down here to set forever, your dot will click back and forth on and off. I'm going to hit stop. 
I'm gonna go back here and I want to show you how to do a tween which is located right here I'm gonna turn uh, first highlight this frame turn that button back on but this time I am going to move this ball or black dot to here okay and then I'm gonna go back and highlight this frame so what I will do next is you see this little uh, button here that looks like a dot that is moving that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to create it so it looks like this dot is moving across the page so right now it's going to add it's going to come up next frame I want to make sure that all layers is, is highlighted your position and all that stuff is checked we're going to add I'm going to change this to 10 frames okay so once I hit OK and it's going the tween with the next frame which would be this frame here once I hit OK watch what happens so what's happening down here is that tween or that motion has been moved so now when I hit play, watch what happens. The tween has changed the position of that ball to move across your frame. Now you can do this back and forth. You can do this up and down. And once you get to the next frame, for the end frame we can go back here to 12 you can create another frame after that for 13 you're going to move that ball to a different area and then move back to 12 and I can do another tween hit OK so look what I've done so far I've gone across and now my ball is going to shoot up that way so I'm going to go back to time frame one, click, okay. So your ball looks like it is bouncing. Let's go back to one again. Now, there's some other things that you can do down here with your timing. Right now it's click on zeros, but let's change. And I'm going to hit the shift key and I'm going to select just these frames. And I am going to uh, put 0.2 seconds between each frame. And then I'm going to hit go or play. So what should happen is it slows down going across and then should speed up uh, because it's zero seconds here. So there's your first animation using Photoshop. So editing your storyboard is about the same as it would be where, with your layers. Let me show you the example. Right now I'm going to just take this layer one that has the black ball that has been performing all of these different motions. I can delete it. So that has deleted all of the black dots clear through this animation. So you have to be very careful with that, but it also can be very useful. You can also come down to the timeline and delete frames as you go. So if I wanted to, didn't like what I'd done within this frame two to frame 22, I can go to frame two, highlight it, go back to 22, hold my shift key down, and it will select all of those frames 
and I can delete those frames. Put another layer here. This time I am going to, on my empty layer in the layers palette, I will make a rectangle and I can fill it in with black. Okay. Okay, so we have our black rectangle up here on this layer, our white background. Um, you can also make some types of illusions by not just um, moving an object, but actually by copying an object and distorting it. And let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to take layer one and copy it, which is my rectangle. So now I have two copies of my rectangle. Um, I'll, and I'll make another frame down here. And I will uh, turn our first off for this particular frame down here. And I am going to go to Edit, Transform, and Warp. So I can take this shape and warp it. like so, and hit the apply. So now what I have uh, down here on my first frame, I will have to turn this top layer off. And for my second frame, I will turn on my warped. So watch what happens now when I hit play. Two different objects, two different layers up here, but it creates the illusion that this rectangle is jerking or bouncing. So you can do some pretty fun things with the animation flipbooks by using images that you might have as well. Anything that you can cut out and place on a layer um, you can basically move around just like the dots that we've been playing with. You can also change the shape of things. Um, this is a fun little tree that I have in my front yard, uh, and it looks like it has a face. So what I'm going to do with it is we're going to try to make it look like it talks using this simple animation. Um, and I will do that by copying it. I'm going to create another um, frame down here. So now what I can do is on this, the top layer of the same tree, an identical look, I can run a filter on it as well. So I can go up here to filter, liquefy, and the other frame will come up, the liquefy filter. And uh, like we have learned before, um, you can go in to it and you can um, freeze part of it. You can twirl part of it, bloat it, pucker it. Right here is a freeze mask. Um, change the size of your brush. So if you don't want parts of that, um, this bush to uh, move, you can freeze those areas so they won't move. So everything here now that's red um, is frozen. So now I can go in with um, say my warp tool and I can move some of this bush and um, hit OK. So now I have that image and the one under it.
So now when I put on the animation, um, frame one is the original bush. Frame two is going to be the mouth as I warped it. So now when I hit uh, play, it takes on the appearance that that bush is talking. There are several ways you can approach your flip book. You can do it just like I showed you. Some students have chose to um, actually hand draw each frame, scan it, put it in, and then manipulate it in Photoshop to make their own flip book. Very original, and I'll show you some of those. Um, just have fun with this. Play around with the software. You maybe use some drawing techniques. Um, it can be very simple or uh, very elaborate, but have fun with it. That's the most important thing.